you know, obviously we would like to have come away with the with, with the win, but yet uh, you, you look for ways uh, that your team is getting better, your ways, areas that your team have improved. And we certainly saw that in both, both games. And uh, Louisville was coming off their first win against a very good Western Kentucky team. And so we, we anticipated they would come out and sort of take us lightly, you know, just, just human nature with the players. And, and we think that's, that's what happened. We got to a slow start, but fortunately, defensively, we played pretty well. And then, uh, much, like, much like tonight versus Kentucky, we sort of you know, gained some confidence and created some turnovers and made a game of it. And then tonight, against a, a very good Kentucky team, I think we saw a similar situation where we turned the basketball over five times in the first four minutes of the game. After that period, we only had seven more turnovers for the remainder of the game. And uh, so again, there's a lot that we can build on, although we lost both games. As coaches, we would prefer if they had come together yesterday. That's just the nature of, of coaches. And of course, we have a better idea for the challenges that lie ahead. Uh, not only uh, the number one team in the country in Purdue, but just, just uh, the outstanding teams that we'll face game in and game out in the SWAT. Uh, so, you know, that part of it, you know, we, we, we're excited about, but as a staff, we're still learning about them. We're still finding out when you need a bucket, you know, who, who can we go to? You know, who can we go to? What situation do we need to put, put that player in? You know, of course, uh, setting ball screens is one of the more prevalent um, offensive schemes in the game today at every level. But we've learned right now that's not going to be a strength of ours. And so when you have uh, Jalen Bates have the kind of night that he had tonight, he had another good performance against Louisville, that's encouraging because it's sending a signal to the coaches, but his teammates as well, that, hey, you know, he, he's earning that confidence, he's earning that trust. And, and you have to have a, a go-to guy. And to this point, you know, we're still finding out that question still lingers. Who's going to be your go-to guy? And so I think these games are really helping us learn those things as we as we uh, head into to conference play. After learning about the, the five-year commitment that John Calipari made to the SWAC, and my hats off to, to Cal, you know, for his commitment. I don't think he gets enough credit you know, for what he's done to support the John McClellan. Uh, foundation, which provides opportunities for minority students to pursue careers in athletic administration. You know, there, there's money is there to, to for internships you know, at any Power Five program across the country. He he, but he put a million dollars of his own money in that. And so, for him to agree to a five-year commitment with the SWAC to do that, that that's uh, that's very very meaningful. Something that he didn't have to do. So. They opened up last year with Southern. Of course, the Sean Woods, the coach of Southern, played here. And so we were able to kind of jump in line and, and get the second nod. And so I'm really happy for our team to have that experience. And it's been really enlightening, not only for our team, but I think in a lot of ways for Kentucky's team. Both teams traveled to Cincinnati, uh, Ohio uh, on Monday. Uh, and both teams spent time at the Freedom Center, the, the Underground Railroad Museum. And not only the, the history of, of, of our country's past, but also so many uh, problems that we're facing as a country, we're facing as a world today. There's still, people are still, kids are still being treated unfairly, slave labor. Uh, there's still uh, the, the sex slaves and, and, and all those issues. You still have too many people that's, that's, going, that's, that's uh, suffering of hunger. And so all of those things were just sort of reminders uh, that we experienced in, in, in Cincinnati. And then when you think about the HBCU experience, uh, you have Kentucky State, it's just no more 25, 30 miles from here in Frankfurt. It's a Division II school. So and then in, in, in Ohio, you have Wilberforce, you have Central State. And so those schools have been around for a long time. And, and you and I, we're very familiar with them, but I don't know that they really garner uh, the kind of attention and recognition that that schools in, in, in Florida, Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, 
uh, Arkansas, South Carolina, those schools that, in, in the states where the, the MEAC schools are located. And so I think any time that you, you can bring events, you can take part in, in events like this, I think it's meaningful not only to the participants, but to the people who's going to be involved in those, in those uh, games, going to be attending or supporting those events. And just to see him walk onto the court uh, at practice today, and uh, you know, I said to him, hey, Clemen, you, you you've more than earned it. And so it was really good for me just seeing a smile on his face. And it's also another opportunity. We, we take so many things for granted. But I just said to the guys, hey, look, his number, you should see it every day. His number, his jersey, you know, it, it hangs in the rafters. And so here's a guy that's, that's uh, he's accomplished so much. And, and so you should feel good, you know, about being a part of this, this, this historical night, you know, on a, on a number of levels. You know, I knew, I knew Reggie Warford, who died early this year, and the first black basketball player to, to graduate from UK. So again, and, and to have Clement a part of that, and then here we are playing against UK, just a, a very, very important night, very eventful night, a night that I hope our players will remember and treasure the rest of their lives.